Today's project is going to be finishing the Borderlands 3 Duke Blaster. First step is to go into the pieces and with a Sharpie and highlight the edges of all the pieces. This is, seems to be the easiest way to me, from my experience, to give it that cell shaded look is just simply with a Sharpie. It keeps your lines more smooth than something like with a, a paintbrush, you don't know where the bristles are going to go. With a Sharpie, you can put it down and know exactly where it's going to end up. Now, it does have a semi-scratchy, hand-drawn aesthetic in the game, so I'm not too worried about particularly clean lines. I just want to have very visible lines. In some of these darker spots, instead of going in with a black line, I'm going to go in with a metallic silver sharpie and that way you still get the same effect but it pops a lot more and the line work is a lot more visible that way. I'm just going to be basically replicating what I do on each side. The reason I'm doing this first is so that I can get in with the sharpie into places that will probably eventually be unreachable once the full piece is assembled. Sometimes these uh, sharpies dry out rather quickly. The way to bring life back into them is just to keep them upside down for a couple minutes and the ink in the reservoir drains back into the tip. You get a much darker color like that way been looking forward to these pieces just because there's so much uh, this extra line work is going to take it from good to great and it's going to hide all my mistakes too and there's these little spots that happened when I was pulling the paint back off to give it that light metallic undercolor, paint flecks would flip off and end up in areas where I didn't want them to be. So instead of trying to hide them, I'm going to accent them. Now on little sections like the cylinder pieces, I'm going to do a light silver sharpie on the edges and the corners. This is where naturally over time, paint would be particularly chipped on these uh, hard corners. These pieces have been begging to be unmasked for like the last week, but I've resisted the urge so I could do it on camera just so I could see that clean line ooh that's uh not as clean as I thought it was <laughs> oh well I mean honestly it's kind of it's a it's a clean line and then it does some funny stuff I can make that look intentional I think that comes from the super cheap masking tape that I was using it was cheap and old it was like dollar store masking tape from five years ago. Hmm. Huh. So we have a little bit of asymmetry here, but that's not the end of the world. As I said earlier, Borderlands, you know, you can work that into the aesthetic. Again, there's little spots like these, little mess ups where a little bit of yellow got on, but I can just turn them into design features. Now it's part of the design and not a mistake. Now I'm just taking the edge of the Sharpie, running it along the edge of the barrel protector. This way, 
only the pigment goes down on the edge and doesn't spill over. Okay, from here it's time to, for the most part, it's just repeating the same process for all the other pieces. It's mostly going to be black and then silver in certain portions. Alright, so I've now reached the point where I've done enough of the cartoon line work to start doing the glue up for the basic body of the prop. There's still some more sections that need to be done just so I can get a grasp on how far along I am. I'm going to start the glue up. Let's see if I can remember how this goes together. Right. There we go. Alright. That's generally the frame of the piece, the outline, the nothing to do but just start gluing things together. It's good practice to rough up some of the pieces to give the glue a bit more of a grip. That way you're not gluing paint on paint, which is more likely to separate, but you're gluing plastic to plastic. Now I know that these two pieces are pressure fit, but the little bit of glue just helps them stick together even better. A little bit of glue is required on the registration tab that goes into the recess. There's a little recess on the bottom and those two slide into each other. And now this is about 20 to 30 minute set time so I'm going to clamp these and take a quick break. And while the big main piece is gluing up I can get back to doing the cartoon line work. This should have sufficiently dried in the meantime, so I can declamp. Now it's time to glue on these side panels. So this is going to be a combination of 
these little pegs that go in there. I'm going to glue those in, and then I'm also going to glue on the side panel. It's important that these tabs go to the front because that's how part of the front panel is attached. So it just needs the tiniest little bit of glue. Alright, now that should be pretty secure and secure enough to flip over and do the same on the other side. I think I'm going to move to cylinder and then the, a cylinder attachment point. The cylinder, honestly, for the most part, can just be pressure fit. And then the spindle goes through the middle. There are little, little rounds that go inside, but I haven't painted these yet. So I think I'm going to use this uh, gold enamel. It's not quite a brass color, but I like it enough. It's the same color that I used on the Mandalorian blaster for the accent pieces. Before I open this smelly enamel paint, I need to go open a window. All right, I'm gonna finish the rest of these cartridges off camera. All right, so during that little brief intermission, I spent some time trying to figure out how to affix the muffler pipes. It's kind of a pain. There's no simple, easy way to do it. You end up just having to wrestle it the whole time. I think that's what I'm gonna do next, is attach the second muffler. And I mean, there's, from what I can tell, there's no easy, simple way to do it. You just, because, because it has to hook into two separate pieces on two separate axes, it has to it has to slot into this piece while slotting into this piece. Now it's time to just sit here and wrestle it. So with the second muffler attached, it's starting to take shape as something kind of ridiculous looking. The next step to do the cylinder and the hammer. The cylinder and the hammer are attached as one piece. They all slot in as one unit. Take the front part of the cylinder and this is the rear. The way this works is this front of the cylinder acts as the front retainer and the hammer acts as the rear retainer and then the whole unit will slide in there. Come on. Here we go. So there we go. I need to finish painting the cartridges, but for right now I'm going to stick one in just to keep these cylinder sections lined up. So the next section is the barrel and then this front retainer plate keeps the barrel in place should be a good pressure fit seal but just a little bit of glue to make sure it stays on tight and then two little shots of super glue in these two recesses these posts to attach the, to the top rail this little bracket piece is what holds on the front of the front plate this piece goes there so the final glue up is almost all but complete with these exception of these last two panels but before i attach those i'm going to do the weathering primarily with these four red to get a rust color black to darken it and make some grease and grime yellow help bring out more of a rust color in that red and then this is thinner to help it run around the edges and 
help the paint get into the nooks and crannies of the piece. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with a red. Red will be the base color, and then the black tones it down. Yellow is what adds that rust look to it. And then, that's not a bad starting color, but I could use some more yellow. In this uh, set of testers enamel paint that I have, I don't have just a simple orange. Orange would be good in this situation, but I don't have that at the moment, so. Paper towel at the ready, and just start attacking. Those were the main spots that I wanted to get weathered. It was just the uh, those side exhaust ports, and then also this this rear section. I also wanted to get weathered. So now that I have those parts weathered, I'm going to go back with a sharpie and just highlight some of the big weathering points. just to bring out some of the intentionality of the weathering, just so that it, it'll pop a little bit more and it'll just be that much more Borderlands with that comic book cartoony art style I was talking about. Oh, what time is it? The birds are out must mean that dawn is coming soon. That's what I've done for now. I'm not sure if I'm going to add more or maybe come back with some uh, rubbing alcohol and remove some of the lines but for the time being that's what I'm gonna stick with and so with that it's time for the final step of gluing on the front panels which if you ask me is what really tie the whole piece together into something very cohesive and cool I didn't say this on any of the other ones that I've worked on but it's always good after you finish a piece to coat the whole thing in some kind of clear enamel or varnish just something to protect the paint job that you just put down because a you don't want it to get damaged and b something like sharpie can easily get rubbed away that's where you want to put on a protective coating to make sure that nothing bad happens to the work there we go okay so that concludes the borderlands torg blaster called the duke i am pretty pleased with how this came out it feels solid but it also has just enough of a creak to i don't know if it's coming out on the audio or not but it's got some heft to it now a little bit of housekeeping thing i'm now on social media i have an instagram and a twitter both of those i'll put a link in the description of this video now if you haven't already you could go ahead and watch the previous two segments how i did the the paint job for the majority of the piece and then the special attention i took to the to the flanges sanding them smooth you cannot tell that these parts are 3d printed in conclusion this is the first project i've put out that's been this big three-part series versus one smaller video. So I'm gonna use this format for larger projects, but then I will continue to have smaller one video projects. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.